With summer truly coming in, a lot of individuals are looking to make changes in their lives, particularly in their body composition and or general health. The ultimate solution for these individuals is to participate in consistent resistance training and strive for their goals. In this video, I will be going over resistance training in a way that any beginner can have a clear understanding on how they can achieve their goals and the necessities that come with these goals. A quick disclaimer, I'm not an exercise sports scientist, nor do I have a kinesiology degree. What I do have, however, is three years of experience in resistance training which has allowed me to gain over 80 pounds and a considerable wealth of knowledge that I wish I knew when I started out. Now to get started. Resistance training refers to exercises that utilize a form of resistance to induce muscular overload. Essentially, we are having the muscle fight a certain level of resistance. Think trying to pull your grandma's knitted blanket out of your dog's mouth. Now actual exercises that utilize resistance training are most commonly free weights, like a barbell or dumbbell, weighted machines, like the pictured lap pull down machine, and even bodyweight exercises, like pull ups and dips. These mentioned forms of resistance training when done with correct weight and proper form provide a great stimulus for positive body change. However, no men mentioned exercise from whether it be a barbell or a pull up bar is superior and you should only stick to that. Rather, utilizing all of these types will allow your body to grow the most. For example, if I want to train my upper body, I'm going to start with a variation of the barbell bench because it is a compound movement. A compound movement being a movement that targets multiple muscle groups. Then as I get more fatigued, I'm going to move on to possibly a pec deck to isolate my pecs. Then finally ending up with some body weight dips to overload anything that hasn't been fully hit. Now this is just an example of how we start out with the most effective yet taxing exercise and work our way to a different form of re resistance training to ensure our growth and safety. Now the accumulation of these exercises will cause micro tears in our muscle fibers which with proper recovery will repair and grow stronger. Essentially the muscle is overcompensating to make the stimulus from our workout more manageable if it were to happen again. Which is why it is important to be consistent in your training and constantly push your body to achieve a greater stimulus than last time. Alright, now that we've touched on the definition and exercises of resistance training, what are some of the benefits that we can expect? Well, there's an absolute countless number of benefits when it comes to resistance training. Now we know the basics, our muscles are going to get bigger and stronger, which is absolutely great. But we are also fundamentally going to change our body structure. We are increasing our bone density, which will make our bones healthier and less likely to be fractured by an accident. Similarly, it will also help with posture, as in our modern world it is very common to be sitting for long periods of time and inadvertently bend in ways your body might not be comfortable with. But by participating in resistance training with proper form, it forces the body into stretches that with time will promote correct posture. We also have an increase in metabolism, which paired with cardiovascular training can facilitate fat loss and help you lose weight. Now an absolute huge benefit, huge benefit I'm, I'm talking about, is mental health. So many individuals in our society are affected by negative mental health. The modern world at times truly breeds mass mental health issues to just a shocking number of people. These affected people are then further sucked into taking copious amounts of drugs and further feed into Big Pharma and the like. Resistance training naturally produces positive hormones and chemicals in your body, especially once a workout has been completed. As a matter of fact, many lifters claim almost a high after completion, which is also backed by science with the numerous hormones and the like going to the brain and making the individual feel good about life and themselves. I'm not saying resistance training can completely solve all mental health issues, but I do believe with the implementation of it in many people's lives, we could see a reduction in the amount of prescription drugs a person has to take to feel good about themselves. Well, we've touched on the definition, the forms, and the countless benefits of resistance training. But how do we actually build muscle and get the benefits that we seek? Well, that's where progressive overload comes into play. 
a very simple yet very important aspect when it comes to achieving our goals. Basically, we are increasing the amount of weight on an exercise, the amount of repetitions that we are doing, or even the amount of sets we are doing. As long as we are progressing in our workouts, we are going to make progress. Many individuals, especially relatively beginner lifters, will come to the gym and repeat exactly what they did last time. This will not facilitate growth. This will make them question why they aren't making progress and that maybe the gym isn't for them, etc., etc. It is incredibly important to be increasing the stimulus you're putting onto your body every workout. Think about it. If we squat 135 pounds for 8 reps last session, and then the next workout we squat 135 pounds for 8 again, are we really causing enough stimulus to the body to where it will change and grow? No, no we are not. Always seek to do more than what you did last time. You have to remember, your body's DNA has had countless thousands and thousands of years to adapt to ungodly amounts of stimulus. It will adapt to the same workouts you are doing, and it will not grow. Now that's not to say if you are failing at increasing the reps, weight, or sets that you are achieving nothing. It is very important to remember that to see change, it can take some time, and that's why you have to be very consistent and patient on your journey. I myself have gotten to the point where it will sometimes take 2-4 to four weeks to put 5 pounds on my 1 rep max on squat. You have to be patient and trust the process. Keep trying to get that ninth or 10th rep and eventually you are going to achieve it. Now just a small little recap of this section because it is very important. It's, it's very important. Essentially, seek to do a little bit more than what you did last training session. It can be 5 more pounds or it can be 5 more reps. Just remember, sometimes you have to be patient but always, always look to do more than last time. Now that you understand what you need to do in order to see changes to your body, you're going to focus on a principle almost as important as muscular overload, that being your form and technique. I'm going to get right to the point. The greater the range of motion during an exercise, the greater the amount of stimulus you will achieve. On the right is a man doing a complete squat. We see that there's almost no range of motion left out from his form, which is absolutely excellent. The range of motion being how much of a contraction and stretch there is during an exercise. The man is starting, standing up, and then contracting and lowering his body downwards to the point where he cannot go any lower, resulting in a picture-perfect squat. If he were to possibly stop only halfway during this exercise, well, then he's going to be missing out on almost half of the contraction, and then the very important deep stretch. The deep stretch is essentially where your body cannot contract the weight anymore due to there being no range of motion left to contract with. This results in a bunch of tension and stimulus being inflicted in the deep stretch position as we've controlled the weight to the point where our muscles are just begging for this contraction end due to the fatigue and damage being done, which is very important for muscle growth. To achieve a full range of motion and a deep stretch on an exercise, make sure to pick a challenging but not impossible amount of weight to utilize. Nextly, one of the most important things I can inform you on is the controlling of the eccentric of a repetition. Now there's the concentric and eccentric portion of an exercise. The eccentric is the lowering of the weight to the deep stretch position, and the concentric is bringing up the weight back to the starting position. It's a very common misconception that the concentric part is where you're building muscle. I mean, it makes sense on paper. Lowering the weight is quite easy, but getting it up is where the real struggle is, right? Shockingly, no. The eccentric portion is the most important contraction and possible aspect when it comes to an exercise. Don't get it wrong, both produce fatigue and both are going to promote muscle growth. It's just that the eccentric is so, so, so much more important when it comes to building muscle. During the eccentric portion of an exercise, almost every muscle fiber is activating in order to slow down the descent of the weight and prevent gravity from forcing it to the floor. This is the biggest mistake new gym goers make, essentially rushing the eccentric and not controlling the weight. Please, 
please listen to what I am saying and control the weight during an exercise. Take in the full range of motion and get a deep stretch at the bottom and then continue the exercise. All right, you understand why and how to build muscle. But you heard that Uncle Terry broke his back during deadlifts or something like that, and you were scared of getting hurt. What do you do? Well, you warm up properly. You don't skip it, and you don't spend 30 minutes doing it. You spend around 5 to 15 minutes getting blood pumping and flowing through the body parts that you're going to train. Activities like walking and jogging are great at getting the body started, along with utilizing gym bands and dynamic stretches. Maybe even throw in some activation exercises, who knows. Once you've finished your beginning warm-up, move on to your first exercise. But just don't rush to a taxing weight. Instead, warm up on the exercise with a lower weight for as many sets as you need. Albeit, don't overdo it. Generally, 2-3 to three warm up sets are good to make a jump to a working weight set. Essentially, a weight that you're going to struggle on yet achieve or come close to the amount of reps you want. Remember to never jump into a heavy weight with no warm up. That is especially how people injure themselves. Always take the extra time to work your way up to a taxing weight, because if you hurt yourself, you're not going to be able to train, and if you can't train, you are not going to make progress. On to nutrition and recovery, the stuff that actually builds muscle. A diet for putting on size and muscle has an emphasis on carbs, proteins, healthy fats, and vitamins and minerals to fully sustain and grow your body. It's easy to think all you need is calories and protein, because that's all that is pushed by some supplement companies. But the truth is, you need a lot and a little of everything. For my first year of training, I would come home after a workout, and all I would have is my protein powder, because that's what was advertised to me as building muscle, completely missing out on the other essentials like carbs and vitamins. After a workout, seek to first fully replenish your body's stores, especially carbohydrates and electrolytes, as that's what was lost during your workout. You don't build muscle from lifting weights, you build it from getting the nutrients your body needs to repair and grow. So like I said, generally after workout, get in your carbs and electrolytes first, and then a little bit later on, move on to foods with high protein, healthy fats, and vitamins. Because during your workout, you essentially put your body into a fight or flight mode from the taxing stimuli that you forced upon it. And so it's not exactly focused on repairing your muscles in the current state, it's focused on getting the resources to survive and thrive in the current situation. And so that's why it's important to get your carbs and electrolytes in, relax a little, allow your body to calm down, and then it, it will be able to facilitate muscle growth. Now when it comes to recovering, muscle soreness is a pretty good indicator on when you can train next. If your legs are still sore three days after your leg day, you can take an extra day to make sure you fully recover. It's not that big of a deal. Now make sure to drink lots of water every day and get a quality eight hours of sleep or more if you can. And also finally on a, a rest day, try not to just sit around on the couch and watch TV and eat chips and the like. Maybe a little bit of chips. But try to do something somewhat active. Not to the point where it could damage recovery like doing another workout, but things like walking and swimming and climbing are just great examples of active recovery, which will make a huge difference in your time and quality of recovery. Wrapping things up, I'm going to touch on some workout plans that you could, can implement for your workouts. Find a lot of these on the internet, just a quick Google search. But some of the most common workout plans are push-pull legs. One day you're pushing, one day you're pulling, next day you're training legs. Pretty self-explanatory. Upper and lower, build, you're training just your upper body one day, lower body next day. Really straightforward. Uh, full body, full body I, I'd probably recommend to a lot of beginners just to get started. Quite simple, do a, some upper body related, lower body related, abdominally related, whatever you want, just doing your full body. Pretty easy for beginners to really just help them get into the exercises and lifting the like. I, I'd recommend that. Strength and hypertrophy, a little bit more advanced, you're doing 
some days just completely strength related exercises and then some days you're just focusing on hypertrophy how big your muscles are and the like so I mean that's kind of what I do I do a bit of an advanced thing push pull legs but strength and hypertrophy related the like it's like one week doing your bench your squat your deadlift heavy training that to get strong in those lifts because they kind of correspond to the other lifts which you can use, then use for hypertrophy like if I'm doing my heavy squats one week, then that's going to transition over to leg extensions quite well because I'm, I'm getting my legs stronger through squats, and then that's going to transition into the weight I can use for my leg extensions and the like. But of course, the best workout plan is what works for you. What does your body respond to the best? Experiment with a, a lot of things. Experiment with whatever you want. Just be consistent and keep striving for what you, what you want and you will eventually accomplish what you want alright guys thanks for watching hope you learned something or were enlightened about a particular aspect of resistance training and possibly helped you along your journey if you have any questions comments concerns about anything that I've touched on or need advice on a particular thing that's not working out for you anything like that please leave me a comment anything like that I'll, I'll respond to it if it's really if I think it's a really good subject I'll maybe even make a video on it anything you want throw into the comments thanks for watching guys I hope I, I hope I've taught you something possibly have a good one and go hit some goddamn legs